Right. So the so the story that goes with the purse was that um, uh, there was a young lady um, working on her you know beading skills, and she was making this purse, and it was just a fabric before the purse was made, but um, it was back when the Native Americans still used to come seasonally um, into the area. And so she was working on the purse down by the beach, I guess, and so um, a Native American came upon her, and she turned and saw and sort of got scared and dropped her beadwork and stayed out of home. Uh-oh, um, uh-oh. You don't know who's home, but... Uh, and I guess that they followed, they picked it up and they, you know, and they followed them. Um, and, um, and I guess he came knocking on the door and the mom kind of came out, you know, what would you like or what do you need? And then he was like, oh, the beadwork is so beautiful. Would your daughter consider, you know, teaching some of the women in our Oh, group? nice. Yeah. So it's really wow. fantastic. What a great um, story. Yeah. Really local, great, um, great story. So, um, let's see, what else do we have in here? We have some time period pieces. This is always a, a guess. What might do you think that is for? Some kind of scissors, but I can't, I can't see what it does. Yeah, so some of the, you know, lots of different guesses, but really it's for, um, if you had a candle to snuff out the, the wick. Oh, so you don't have to touch the out. Yeah. But if you blow, it does it spatter wax all over exactly. the place. Exactly. Okay. So smart, so smart. <laughs> Um, yeah, so those are some of our, our, our cabinet finds, um, and over behind me, we have, um, this wool work, and this was because people used to make memorials to someone that had passed away, oh. and so sometimes they would even use some of the fabric of their clothing, um, uh, sometimes there would be hair that they would use, it sounds a little strange today, but, um, a custom that people used to do. Um, and so this was given to us, um, and this is back from, you know, the 1800s, 1880, it says on the, on the tag, but, um, it's a memorial, you know, for someone who's passed away. So that was somebody from Swampscott. It's yeah. beautiful. And then over here, we have a painting. This is a, is a painting of a part of Swampscott, which might shock some people because it really doesn't look like this today, but we don't, you, we don't have the house today. We don't have the house. If you go down um, uh, Humphrey Street to Atlantic Avenue and right before Marblehead Crescent Beach, that whole area there was a bit swampy and farmy. And so someone painted a, a painting here um, and that's what part of Swamp Scott used to look like. So wow. very, uh, very different than, than today for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And then we have a bunch of uh, paintings of, of local homes and things. We, we have an original of the Humphrey house before it was moved. Oh, it is yeah. kind of neat. I was noticing the other day that the, the giant tree that used to be out in front um, in its old location on Elmwood, but we also have a, a lovely giant tree that's out, <laughs> that's out front um, today. So it's sort of similar. But the, back then they had a porch covering kind of oh sure at some point that was added that would, would be original but um you can see the giant uh chimney that was there oh before. yeah more than the chimney that there is today sure yeah and then if we head over this way i would like to show you this cabinet and this cabinet's actually pretty special um it relates to our um seasonal uh, uh, industry of hotels. Oh. So Swampscott uh, started the fishing village, mm -hmm. right? And then um, it became one of the first real seaside resort towns of the U.S. And this cabinet was in a very famous hotel called the New Ocean House Hotel, wow. which doesn't exist anymore, um, un un uh, unfortunately. Um, it did burn down in 1969. Um, and there is footage of that on the, on the internet. You can find that. Um, wow. There. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. But this hotel was quite the fancy hotel. And this um, was a music player that was in the lobby of the hotel. And it has oh. this great top that opens up. And it played music on wax cylinders. And these are some of the cylinders here. And I don't know. Let me pull it out. I don't remember. There it is. And look that, at that. And it had little, has little grooves in it, um, like a record player. Um, 
Some of the kids might not know what a record player is, but it's a disc of plastic that has little grooves and there's a needle that picks up and the sound. picks up the sound and it will come out of a speaker. Or in this case, because this was a fancy hotel, um, they wouldn't want to um, uh, disturb all the guests with music. That maybe disturbs not the right word, but they had headsets that came off of these tubes. They came out so they could come to the music player and hear music uh -huh. and not disturb the rest of the, the guests that were in the hotel. Wow. And so upstairs, I'll show you a picture of the new Ocean House. But there were many hotels. There were larger hotels. I mean, this one had at least 300 rooms. I mean, it grew over time. Um, and there were other hotels that were... People had homes that had, you know, eight bedrooms and they turned it into a hotel. Oh, so it was a seasonal, seasonal uh, resort town for, for a long time. Although, what a beautiful location for it. Yeah, the, yeah. the ocean was really a, a nice cooling, uh, hot, uh, cool spot uh, to get out of the city especially, but people came from all over to come to Swan Sky. Wow. Yeah, so now I think we should head upstairs and see our museum room. Sure, that sounds good. Thank okay. you. Yeah. here actually are um, uh, the, the formation of mid-1600s homes um, that were, you know, an affluent homeowner. So what you're seeing is the shape, the pattern, um, all the risers and handrails. Um, so we, we think they could be original, but we don't know for sure. Okay. Um, but this is certainly the style uh, of the day. Of the new Ocean House wow. Hotel. This is over on, well, New Ocean House Beach. Some people call it Eisman's Beach or Whale Beach. Okay. Um, and this had a bathhouse. And after, um, this is actually before they had a pool. So there was a pool actually right over here. And this is called the Ascendra, this rounded um, sitting area. And it partial, it's partially still there if you go down to um, New, new Ocean House Beach. But here's the hotel. You can see all That's the rooms. Huge. It's amazing. It's hotel. massive. It had mm. it had a, its own newspaper. It had its own bakery. It had you know like it was a oh, whole wow. golf course in the back. You can see some of the oh, sure. the, the the sand traps. Um, and there was a little nine hole three par three course. Um, wow. So that was really amazing for for Swampscott. Um, and as you look around the room, you'll see that the decorations. Uh, and the beams are a little uh, less refined. Oh, so yeah. this room is much more like it was in the 16, you know, 1700s. Um, let's see, um, over here, so Swampscott has a lot of history that we have the lobster trap, the Swampscott Dory, the first really resort town, um, but there's also an aviation history in Swampscott. Okay. Yeah. So the you can see the beach here. You can see this looks a lot like um, Kings Beach. It's you know low tide. It's very flat. Um, and there was um, a Swampscott resident that that came up with um, one of the first monoplanes. Before the monoplane were, were the were the biplanes. I don't have a picture of what you know with the two. Uh, wings on each side, mm -hmm. and so we have a statue down at Fisherman's Beach that ha it talks about John Aubrey, and um, and he saw. I guess the story goes he saw a, a bird flying down and catching prey, and he thought, well, a bird can fly with two wings. Why can't we make a plane with two wings? So he came up with the monoplane. Um, he sold the idea to the army, um, although um, didn't get that far. I guess one of the planes crashed. And, uh, oh dear. Yeah. So and other people were working on aviation at the same time. So, but anyway, this is one of the um, propellers of, of one of his planes, um, which were made here in Swampscott. Wow. Yeah. Um, and actually behind you over here on the wall, um, is an artist's rendition of what the Humphrey House would have looked like. Um, and you can see King's Beach would have been down in here. And uh, Mission on the Bay here, uh, Hadley School probably in this area. 
and this this so Elmwood Road would have been kind of up here and Monument Ave would go off towards the park Outlook Park at the end um, so that's that's I mean it, you know when when John Humphrey came here it was it was still um, very wilderness like um, because there's no other there's no other houses or buildings in that picture sure um, wow. right I mean he came to Salem which would have been one of the towns nearby in Boston obviously but um, in Marblehead you know all sort of starting at the same time but up here you can see the land grant was sort of basically right. what Swampscott is now I mean here's down in the haunt um, and then up into Marblehead, but he would have come into Salem and then oh. traveled down to see where his land was and then had, you know, people and helpers, you know, build this house um, in, uh, in Swampscott, which was, this was all Saugus at the time, I mean, south of Salem, but, um, oh, okay. but anyway, so that's sort of the general idea of uh, what it was like when you, when you got here. I mean, certainly there were people here before, the Native Americans, there were, they were here as well, so. Um, it was always a kind of coming and going and, and working with them and conflicts and such. So um, anyway, but and this house was built with, I want to show you, so the Saugus Ironworks, I don't know if anyone's ever done a uh, tour of Saugus Ironworks, but that's a great spot. And so um, these are some of the nails that they would have used. You can see that they're handmade. They have that sort of rose top to them um, and they're hand forged really. You can see that they're not machine made and that's what um, was used here in the house. So every nail had to be made by hand. Yep. In those days. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, pretty amazing. <laughs> Um, and right behind, I'm going to show you in this corner, this is a great, we should step over here so you can get a good look. So see, these are some of the, the bricks and oh, they yeah. used oyster shells uh, as some of the mortar between the bricks. Um, oh. So, you know, the story goes is that, you know, Humphrey brought some of these, the timber and the bricks from England and so they could use that as ballast in the bottom of the ship as well. Um, okay. you know, it served a purpose. For the weight, yeah, okay. so it served a dual purpose. Um, and so they, these bricks were, and this is the second floor of the house. They had them in the first floor as well, but when they moved it over, the story goes is that they, they took the bricks out of the first floor. Okay. And that's, that's, that's what I've heard. I don't know. <laughs> sure. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's really great to have that little window to see how they, you know. To see what's on, behind the plaster. Partial construction, wow. sure. And then, as I said before, the, the, the Native Americans work here seasonally. There's some of the um, owners of the house um, we're quite friendly and you can look at some of these beams and we have these decorations done um, by some of the, the folks that came. There's some other um, there's some other decorations on the other wall so we don't know the time framing between you know when these were done versus some of the beams and the posts as well but what what is interesting though is you can see these boards have gaps in them but you can see these little nail holes they used to use sailcloth and nail in the sailcloth to keep some of the drafts down because it was really not insulated oh. like a house from today. Um, and that would have helped. And you can see just little scraps of that that's left over. Um, oh, so I the decorations were covered up to some degree. You know, if you, if you look at an old house and you see past work and new work, um, sure. definitely is here. Um, and then I definitely should talk about this lovely boat. This is a little model of a Swampscott Dory. So a Swampscott Dory is a world famous boat design um, from here in Swampscott. And the way that, the, if you look at some of the old pictures of Swampscott, I can show you in this right here, we have a picture of the fish house and there are Swampscott Dories. And you can see horses would have used been to bring up the fish haul from the bo boats. The dories were either fished out of by themselves or mm -hmm. they would use them to get them, get the fish or catch off the larger um, boats in the harbor because mm -hmm. our harbor's pretty shallow. So they would need these sort of boats and they'd bring them up from the shore on rollers, sort of like how they moved the house on rollers. Um, okay. But the in, the, in the model, we have these little, um, these little model rollers right there underneath so they just you know oh. they they would put it like that and roll it up and get an, another one and put it here and keep rolling it up the beach okay. so we and we have a real swamp spread dory in the shed behind the house and we have right. a, a couple of rollers out there as well um so when we have the house open 
not sure when that would be, but um, next time we have the house open because of COVID, um, we are kind of closed at, at the moment. So, sure. but that's a great part of Swanscott history. I mean, the the dories have been requested all over the world for the for the plans to make them. Um, mm -hmm. And that flat bottom really helps um, to get up the shore, and that and it helps in the because the stern is narrow at the back. It was um, helpful in our local area for getting getting out and back in waves and conditions and things like that. Um, and then over here, we have a few different models of the lobster trap. The lobster trap was. Um, Designed and made in Swampscott. Wow. Yep. And this is a lo lath lobster trap. And it was designed in 1808 by Ebenezer Thorndike, who's a fisherman here in Swampscott. And before that, people, there were so many lobsters here, you could literally, you know, reach down and pick them out. Um, but <laughs> as people right. kept eating them, um, you know, it got a little thinner. But, um, but you wouldn't have to do that uh, uh, if you had a trap. And so he, he designed a trap and it was, you know, modified and changed over time. But he was the first one that, that made a lobster trap and he did quite well for himself after uh, being able to catch a lot a lot of lobsters with the traps and certainly still used today. Absolutely, the big industry today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in the cabinet over here, we actually have a few, um, well, we have lots of things, but um, if I can pick out just, uh, some of the shoes that you might see. The shoe industry was huge in next next door in Lynn, but before that, people used to make shoes uh, or parts of them in their homes or in little 10 footers, little little shacks, sort of 10 foot shacks that are um, usually next to someone's house or in front of it. Um, and that would be a sort of sales point um, sometimes. I mean, it would not be shoes, but but I just wanted to show you some of these cute little shoes that- uh, that how tiny that is. is. How tiny that is. Wow. Little kids' shoes. Yeah. Super fun. But our connection to Lynn as well, because the um, the shoe industry was huge in, in, uh, in Lynn. It was the biggest manufacturing of shoes in the, in the world at one point. Wow. Um, so yeah, so we, you know, we're just I'm just kind of picking out a few things that we have uh, here in our collection. Um, we do have a children's room upstairs. If I'd like to go see some children's items. I would love to see that. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Right. Take a peek at the risers there. Look at how high these stairs are. This is a six inch ruler. And, okay, so here we are. We're in the children's area. Hello. Oh, welcome to the children's uh, children's room here at the Humphrey House. We have a great collection of uh, toys and school um, school work and, and the things that kids use uh, in school, but also to play with. And um, let's see. We have you can see this lovely jacket uh, worn by a, a young Swanscott scholar let's say um and then uh um it's hanging from a desk that would have been um uh, used here in swampscott the top even has a hole for the ink well because um they used ink um until the 60s i think um mm -hmm. i think you're right and on top we've got some building blocks that are stone which are a bit fancy but wow. quite old are from around the 1900 give or take um, but something the children would have would have used, and today they uh, they have you know you typically wooden blocks, um, yeah. but these but are, they've lasted so many years. They've lasted so <laughs> many years, and it, even an eraser for the uh, for made the chalkboard, out of an old carpet piece for the chalkboard. Wow. Um, yeah, it's quite a collection. And over here we have a a doll bed, but it's really it's sort of a, a recreation of a bed that um, that that people used as grown-ups as well, but they didn't have a, a box spring underneath. They had a mattress on top, but it was held up by these strings, held tight by these strings. Oh, is that where the expression sleep tight? Ah, sleep tight. So you don't sag? Yeah, you have to tighten up the, 
Tighten up the strings so you, yeah, so you don't, so I'm sad. Um, I learned something today. Sleep tight, don't let the bed bones bite. That's right. It. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, and you can even see the ropes. In fact, I think over here we have a good example I'm remembering. So you can see the rope work underneath. And if, the, if these are not tight, you're going to sag down to the floor or right, something. Right, right. And this looks like a trundle bed that could come out from underneath if you have a guest a sleepover, as we say today. Yeah. Um, also in the room, we have a great little uh, tea set and furniture um, uh, collection here. Um, so the kids could uh, kind of act like grown-ups using their, their tea. I guess um, kids have enjoyed having tea parties for a long time. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. You can see these little... Um, uh, oh, what do you call the, the silhouettes? Silhouettes. Yeah. Right. That silhouettes were definitely popular back in the around the turn of the century uh, of the last century, um, and so um, that seems super appropriate for those two. Um, what else do we have in the room? We have a nice little dollhouse. Um, we have a little model of the Humphrey House. Uh, see that model? Now this model shape is what they call the salt box style house. And this is what the Humphrey house is. So they would originally would have built the house in this shape and then added the lean-to in the back. And today that's where the uh, kitchen is. Um, and we have an extra room back there. A lot of times there'd be a dairy room in the back. Um, but the salt box style, um, is, is that's, what they, that's what the Humphrey house shape is. Um, and over here we have a bathtub. And there's a whole saying that goes with the bathtub about... Um, don't throw the baby out with the bath water because typically on a Saturday night, that's when everyone would take their bath and the head of the household would have the first bath and then sort of go through the ages of people and then the baby would have it last, which does sort of seem funny today because we sort of really pamper the babies now. But um, when you take the water and throw it out, don't want to throw the baby out with the bath water. <laughs> don't forget the baby's still in there. Yes. That's such an adorable little chair. Oh, it is. It is. It's special, actually. Um, oh, I gave it away. If you have a seat and rock in it. Oh, look at that. I've never seen a rocking chair with a music box. Isn't that fun? I can see little kids enjoying that. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's really nice with our collection, for sure. It's so imaginative. Um, yeah. And then over here, we have a great stroller um, that used to stroll one of our great personalities of Song Scott, Mr. Louie Gallo. We have a picture of Louie in the oh, stroller. No Can you get him in there? <laughs> wow. Isn't that fun? Oh. Yeah, he, he is our uh, unofficial official historian of Swamp Scott and a little bit of Louis Gallo uh, history right here um, as a nice stroller, um, much fancier than the ones I have, I'm sure. <laughs> but it just looks so classic. Yeah, you know, it, it really does. Yeah. Like yeah, so the rooms in the in the Humphrey house, you know, there there is another room on the other side of the third floor. We have the lean-to has uh, are now our offices um, and um, some archival space storage. Um, but yeah, this is this is this is uh, a room that you know played with, you know, kids played in, um, but also. Uh, I'm sure a bedroom over the years with people living sure. here for three, you know, yeah. over 300 years. So, wow. um, but but definitely typical toys of a variety of ages that you see here over time. Um, over time, kids, yeah. but kids, it's it's so similar to today. Mm -hmm. There's dolls, there's blocks, there's you know little things to to play with that mm -hmm. um, kids would really enjoy. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So this is the traveling oh. through the real the attic. You can see some of the beams, uh, hands sawn like in a in a saw pit where they would cut the beams. You can see some of the bark. You can see the uh, wooden pegs that were holding them together. Wow. Um, there's, oh yeah, there's really, a wooden peg right there. Yeah. yeah. So. It's really remarkable. We have another room. We have some archival things downstairs. Cool. Uh, I mean, in here, but also in our. Um, in our storage area downstairs. 
Yep, and so we can head down these stairs. Oh, these stairs would have been in the area of where the old chimney was. Um, oh, so you really have to watch your step because they're um, super um, non consistent. <laughs> I see what you mean. Okay. When you're used to it, I'm sure the kids who came out to that room just scampered up and down because they got used to it. Sure. I'm just going to measure the.